good afternoon or nearly noon. Um, I've designed a, a lot of uh, objects. Uh, in the last few years, a lot of my work has been dealing with uh, emerging technologies. And nowadays, I'm getting closer and closer um, to deal with uh, medical technology or technology that is nearly medical. Um, part of the story of uh, what I'm doing is um, to create architectures of uh, bits of technology that somehow not always uh, logically or easily been put together. In this case, this is an image of uh, Project Aura, which is a modular phone developed by Google. But the important thing here about what I'm doing is not necessarily the story of the project or the endeavor to change the, the structure of mobile phones, is actually the story of a, the power of the image itself. The ability of an image or uh, a geometric form to uh, inform us as humans about what the object should be doing, and in doing so, allowing us intuitively to relate to it, uh, to elicit some emotions, uh, hopefully positive, and to get people excited. So this image actually became kind of the iconic image of Project Aura, and actually, when doing so, uh, allowed and pushed forward uh, a lot of processes uh, inside uh, the company or outside the company that really uh, made people excited about it. So part of the story about designing for medical um, applications or medical technologies is actually the ability to connect emotionally and in many cases uh, intuitively with a variety of um, social structures. You know, we tend to talk about people in terms of patients, but uh, we just mentioned uh, we just heard um, uh, stories about the medical profession as a community. How do we deal with that community? How do we deal with media? How do we deal with grand society and politicians and so on? And part of the job that I think designers should take is to try to figure out how with their tools, visual, conceptual, architectural tools, they could actually alleviate uh, uh, difficulties or actually smooth the edges around very complex problems. One of our latest uh, projects is a project called Oku, and it's trying to get a little bit more objectivity and social interaction with uh, cosmetics. So there is a little device, it's a little cube, and this cube will actually scan your face and tell you for the first time what is, from a scientific perspective, your skin type. And that's relatively, I guess, simple. The interesting thing about the other side, if you look uh, on the app to the left, is now you could actually go and compare your skin with somebody else uh, on the net, and that would allow you to make some decisions about what kind of cosmetics you should take to take care of your skin. So it's the first time we have some kind of an objectivity in the story of how, how do I best take care of my skin. So, typically when people look at industrial designers, and my agency, New Deal Design, has quite a few of them, is that we are trying to get uh, ergonomics or usability as a, as a prime uh, uh, focus. Uh, User-centered design is often mentioned, but the real issue with uh, users of many of uh, these technologies is that they are actually not aware of how to use them. So even though this could be uh, an informing image, to me, this is somewhat of the wrong image to associate with what we do. This is not necessarily the use of uh, the object itself. It's actually the environment around the object, as I mentioned, the, the, for instance, the, the social aspects of the web. Um, we do a whole bunch of uh, devices. Uh, this is uh, a small device that deals with music. It's some kind of... Um, uh, server for music, it's called Beep. And the notion today is that you could actually get a very low cost computer basically uh, put into anything. In this case, it's basically a glorified um, a knob that you push or you turn and it creates uh, a variety of impacts on the you know, music that you actually uh, hear. And that 
commoditization of computing is something that we should take very, very seriously because we could actually get very small with uh, very powerful computers today. All that, for me, is just the uh, beginning of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a very interesting story that happens today. I mean, today was supposed to be the, uh, the release day of um, the Apple Watch, and these are actually the competition. These are a bunch of um, Android watches. And um, Apple is uh, coming late and very strong into this game. And the interesting thing that I'm looking at these, and I'm asking myself, are these really the future, or are we getting ourselves into trouble? You see, the, the, the biggest issue that um, I see as a phenomenon that comes from technology, and in this case, medical technology industry, is the idea that if we load more and more functionality on our wrists, things will get better. And in many cases, in my opinion, it's not. We need to be a lot more uh, thoughtful and a lot more sensitive, I mean, sensitivity in the sense of emotional intelligence to what we put on our wrist and why. So if you look at what all these smartwatches are trying to do, it's basically to take your iPhone or Android phone and put it on the wrist. This is essentially becoming some kind of a micro-terminal. And microterminal it will actually spew a lot of interactions, a lot of comments about your status and so on. And this will be uh, quite a laborious uh, and time consuming and attention grabbing uh, object. So one of my biggest goals talking about wearables is actually moving away from microterminal to something that is more, I call it digital persona. It's something that becomes part of your personal uh, identification around you and actually gives you only small cues, sometimes really glanceable cues, that you could ignore if you wish un until the critical moment where things go blinking red and then you need to attend, attend the device. So, um, I'll show two projects. Uh, this is a project that has been announced and it's out there and uh, it's called Sparkling. It's the beginning of trying to get a new type of uh, devices associated with babies. In this case, we have um, a calf that is um, a sensor on the baby's uh, leg. There's going to be an app and there is um, a base station that monitors the room uh, for a variety of uh, aspects. Um, it's very difficult to put wearables on human bodies. And one of the things that is underrated typically is how difficult it is. You really need to find the right uh, geometry, and typically this is not a linear or planar geometry, to place a sensor in a way that is meaningful from a technological perspective. So actually the sensor is aligned with a biological feature that gives you the right data. So we spent a lot of time getting uh, the device uh, on, 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 on the leg of, of a baby, which is a, a very uh, cute uh, organ, but it's also very, growing very rapidly. In the first year, a uh, baby is more or less triple in this size. Um, one of the main goals of the work we've done was that you could actually walk around the house without your um, mobile phone. And in order to enable that, we created um, a system of uh, color cues that is uh, broadcasted through the um, base station. So if you pass next to the nursery and you see the base station flashing red, you will grab your phone and see something wrong. Uh, similarly, if you see something uh, in yellow, you could actually just uh, reduce the level of uh, an anxiety and just check maybe there is some kind of a mild uh, technical glitch or something along these lines. So this type of um, glanceable interaction uh, allows you to walk around home feeling relatively comfortable without getting um, uh, too stressed about a variety of situations. Uh, we obviously work today um, on connecting uh, the physical object, which looks like a, a dish, to um, a user interface that looks like a dish as well. And uh, part of that connection 
uh, that jumps between uh, the physical domain to the digital domain and back is something that I think uh, we should work very hard to, uh, to get. Sometimes you, you get new devices and it seems like they've been designed by two different groups uh, without real um, use of the same um, geometries, the same iconography or, or so on. Um, the object itself, uh, typically, in wearables, uh, requires us to jump and use a variety of materials. Uh, one of the biggest contributions in, in this story was actually creating uh, a strap that is removable from the sensor and has a very, very soft uh, Velcro that is uh, uh, strong, but at the same time, not irritating. So the ability to replace or actually have uh, the right fit over time uh, between the sensor and the human body is something that is very, uh, very important um, as we move forward in, uh, in getting uh, wearables um, more assimilated into our, into our lives. And also another thing that is hidden in this image is the use of ornaments. So if you look carefully, you could see the bottom of the um, uh, base station and the, the, um, the straps themselves have some kind of an ornament. And it's very important to, to relate to that because as technology becomes very personal, typically we tend to uh, forget that we usually are paying attention to, to what we wear and many of our clothing and uh, jewelry and so on have patterns that are emotionally and culturally allowing us to feel very comfortable with these objects. So as I'm designing these objects, it's very important for me not only that they'll be functional but also culturally well grounded. So this is one little cue that um, often um, overlooked, but for me is actually very important. Um, the device itself um, has um, a lot of uh, complexity in terms of the internal structure, but um, we wanted to really simplify uh, the bottom of the uh, sensor and to make it as clean and as possible, and this is made from elastomer. So it's semi-flexible and actually could fit a variety of uh, leg diameters and so on. Um, and if you look at the icon value, and I mentioned earlier um, the, the Aura iconic image, you could look at this image and see that there is something that is somewhat similar to a little red heart. And for me, it was very important to have something that is uh, distinctly uh, more, let's say, whimsical or even uh, cartoonish uh, embedded within this uh, whole story of, of technology and babies. So this is a project that um, is out there and yet as we think about our role in New Deal design within this whole uh, phenomena of um, uh, technology design and, and, and uh, wearables, we actually thought that we have a little bit more provocative, provocative uh, role. And we initiated a project that deals with a very fundamental problem we have with uh, technology, medical products, um, which is interface. How do we interact within, uh, how do we interact with these devices? I mentioned earlier that the current paradigm within smartphone is actually to project your mobile phone uh, screen onto your, sc uh, onto your wrist. So, we, we had a debate internally in the studio and we said, how about we create a conceptual um, monitor, if you wish, or a user interface device that is going to be implanted into your body. And it's going to be implanted around your thumb area here. And we'll have two nodes. One node is going to be more exposed and the one node is going to be more um, personal and somewhat hidden. It's the one that is uh, in your palm. And uh, that is the beginning of Project Underskin. And to do that, we actually researched a lot about, uh, you know, subject like body mod modification, tattoos, piercing, and so on. And the technology of this device is quite uh, readily available. Uh, as we looked around where we're going to put it on the, on the uh, human hand, 
we actually had a variety of locations and eventually we, we, uh, we got to this concept that this is a fairly um, stable place to actually have um, uh, an interface device. Um, so the way this device works is it's actually creating some kind of uh, image. And the image is based on a uh, pentagon. And we are creating some kind of a display that has iconography. And the interesting thing about this iconography, besides being somewhat uh, ornamental, is that it's not easily discernible. You won't see numbers. You won't see data flows. You won't see percentage. And the notion is to create some kind of a graphic design language that you're familiar with that is personalized, and when you identify it, you know what is the context of it. So, for instance, if we'll have um, a normal situation, this is everything all is, is okay, but at the same time, what you see here is that there is a little blinking on the bottom right. Now, only you would know that this is associated with glucose. You don't need necessarily to flow data. This is very important because it's personal to you and in many situations, in social, um, uh, mo social situations, you don't want to expose something that uh, maybe is too private or so too sensitive for you. So the whole concept of what I call introvert UI is very important. Uh, a lot of us looking at uh, medical information uh, as a very, very serious topic and uh, the typical modality is to think about it in terms of privacy, but one thing that we could use here is to create cues that are really personal and nobody else knows about them. So this concept of introvert UI could be something that uh, used into that. Uh, similarly, uh, this device could uh, be exposed outside and show you some indication uh, of a transaction. Basically, uh, the authentication of your persona was done correctly. And it could be an indication of exchange of data. Again, we're talking about something that looks like uh, a jewelry, but somewhat um, associated with technology, something that is uh, more akin to the original meaning of a handshake, which is exchanging personal greetings rather than uh, exchanging pieces of data. And finally, the one thing that we all want to know yeah. is <laughs> Is there a connection? And maybe this device could help as well. Yeah. All right, that's all. Thank you. When do I get to wear it, Gadi? How far? Um, well, the technology is not far-fetched, and we assume uh, it's about five years from being real. The interesting thing that eventually, uh, so actually immediately after we published that, we got a lot of uh, emails and messages, and there are some people out there that already embed devices that are not that dissimilar. Uh, I've, I've had a discussion with somebody that had a Bitcoin uh, chip in their arm, in one arm, on the right, right arm, and RFID chip on the left. Uh, there's a whole um, underground group of actually people that uh, embed these type of devices already into their bodies. Somewhere in Cupertino right now, there's somebody who just heard that who's registering domain name, names iunderskin.com or something. I think the I has been already used and <laughs> maybe too much. <laughs> thank you, guys. All right, thank you.